Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good morning for some of you. Uh, hello, world. Uh, glad you're joining us tonight. Um, this is episode number three uh, of the series called Facing the Tiger, Unleashing the Human Spirit at Work. Um, it's a series of webinars with Dr. John Scherer, uh, and I will be hosting your webinar tonight. My name is Agata Chilarska. Um, the plan for us is to be here for about an hour together. Um, and John uh, will, the, the, the title of today's um, episode is uh, The Secret of Self-Mastery. Uh, and for the first half an hour, John will explore that topic um, for us, uh, hopefully with your participation. We're um, encouraging everybody to use the chat window, to use the Q&A while John is talking. You do not have to wait until he's done to raise your questions. Um, any questions that come up or comments that come up throughout the webinar are more than welcome. That makes it a bit more interactive. We're struggling as it is not being able to see any of you or you know, for me to touch any of you or to relate to any of you. So let's keep as, as interactive as possible given the circumstances. Uh, and then the second half an hour is gonna be for you to ask more questions, to go into more of a conversation with us on um, this fascinating topic of secrets of self-mastery. Um, a few um, housekeeping things before we, before we, we start. Um, our um, next episode, number four, um, is scheduled for November 18th. Normally we do these webinars bi-weekly, but in two weeks we happen to um, have uh, our Independence Day in Poland where we're dialing in. The 4th in. of July here in Poland, yeah. So yes, 11th September is like uh, the 4th of July. Um, so uh, our next episode, episode number four, is scheduled for November 18th. Mark that date. We'll also be sending you invitations, but you can you know pencil that in. It's November 18th at 8 p.m. Polish time, which makes different it... Time. Note to different time. Yeah, which makes it not sure what time uh, where you are in the U.S., but I'm sure we'll be sending different time zones in the invitation. Um, it is going to be about uh, two and a half hours later than we're, where we're seeing you tonight. Um, so that's in two weeks. And then we have, we're planning to have a very special guest, Dr. Barry Johnson. Um, uh, I think a, a worldwide expert on um, polarity management. And Bay, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to see that episode. Barry Johnson is an absolute um, master of the topic and, and um to have him and John in a conversation together. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> amazing. Um, so I hope you can be with us in three weeks. That's November 18th. Um, tonight, before we begin, I do want to say something. Um, a lot of Polish women are on strike tonight and have been for the last week. Um, they're protesting against um, anti-abortion strict laws in Poland and anti and against the government um, that is cur uh, currently violating um, democracy in Poland. Um, so as I'm sitting right here in front of you, in front of the screen, it's um, November 28th. I'm, I can hear cars honking outside, crowds of people walking outside right by my window. Uh, and I'm in Gdynia, Poland. And as soon as we're done, I will be joining um, these people. It's not just women, it's everybody <laughs> um, out there in the, in the street protest. So we do wanna say that our heart is with you um and you know you're doing the right thing all right i think it's over to you john i have um well thank you aggie yeah. i i heard from five men here in poland who uh who sent me a note saying john i'm i really want to be on this webinar but i got to be on the street with my sisters. I just think that's fabulous. So yeah. Really, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you need to let me share there, Aggie. Give me permission to share on the screen. One second. Yeah. It was working a minute ago, but now the rules have changed or something here. Mm. Well, let me say something while we're trying to figure that out. I think um, that's done. You should be able to share now. I share now? Yep. Um, I've thought a lot about this 
topic, the secret of self mastery and, and why, you know, what gives me the right to talk about this basically. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this work uh, for probably my whole life uh, when I think about it. Um, it's, and also I've been working with facilitators now. There are 45 facilitators in our, in our network of facilitators of our intensives, our personal and leadership development intensives from 12 countries, 40 some people. And, and my responsibility and has been ever since I can remember to help pe develop people into people that are able and willing to be with other people. And as we say to the facilitators, if you're in the room, you're in the program. Like you don't, you don't take a shower with your raincoat on just because you're a facilitator doesn't mean that you're not also in the room participating in the very same uh, questions. Like uh, quite often when we uh, give a question to the room and they're in pairs or trios or something, quite often the staff, we're, we're, we're pairing and, and asking ourselves the same questions. And how many times have we gone over those questions, gone into and down? And so in order to be a facilitator, what I'm saying is you need to be able to find a deeper truth every single time you take on a particular question or something like that. So, um, and years ago in, in 1973, 74, Bob Crosby and Ron Short and I uh, in Spokane, Washington, Bob Crosby was the creative genius that created this. And I was on the, the founding faculty for the first graduate program in this, field of applied behavioral science, the first competency-based uh, program. And, and my assignment as a faculty member was to come up with a way of helping graduate students uh, track their development. How do, you, how do you help people figure out how they're doing? You can't take a test, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So I feel strangely qualified um, to have this conversation with you. I don't feel like I'm, 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 I've mastered it, but I'm in the process of mastery. So here we go. Self-mastery, um, you know, uh, what in the world does, does self-mastery mean? Where does it come from? Why is it important? Uh, let me get my clicker here going. And there's a thank you to, you know, Simon Sinek. Uh, you know, <laughs> we got to start with the why. Why bother with self-mastery? I mean, who cares? I mean, you can go through your whole life. Many people do. But there's also a great quote, um, I've forgotten who it is, uh, that many people die with their music still inside them. And so this is about, this is about being who you are. Why are you here kind of thing, you know? Why are you here? In fact, we start the book, um, The Face in the Tiger book coming out in a few weeks. We start the book with, why are you here? I mean, why are you here? Why are you on this call? You're on this call because something moved in you about this question. So let's, take, let's get started. Those of you who know me understand, here's, here, here, here's why. Here's one reason why self-mastery is so important. Here's somebody over here has something going on in their life. They have a history, they have a life, they have hopes and fears and stuff like that. They want something, they're interacting with the world. They do something in the world. This is what we could see on a video. And then here, here's somebody over here has an interpretation and they decode what's happening in the world. And that's based on their, their history. And here we are over here. And so this is what I call the three worlds. Other people have their world. We have our world. And then there's what happened in the world. And those are quite often three very different things. And the process, why, why bother with self-mastery is because as, as we'll get into later, we can't do anything about that other person's world. I remember um, having this thing about managing change, you can't manage change. You can't manage other people. They have to manage themselves. You can influence other people by what you say and, and what you do and what you intend. But we'll get back to that in just a second. And somebody says, well, look, I don't need self-mastery. I just write code all day long. And I've, I've, I've consulted over the years in this really fabulous uh, group of people in, in Krakow called U2I. And these, these people write really, really great code. And, uh, and so I've, I've worked with them now for five or six years. And so I think I know a little bit about that world. And if, you know, they'll say, hey, I write code. I don't interact with anybody. Okay, all right. They don't say that now, but I can imagine people saying this. 
I only work with facts. I work with numbers. I work with the hard stuff. You know, you know my thing about the water line. I, I go to work, I, I, I write my code, you know, then I go home, I'm done. Okay, got it. But below that water line is the human world, the quantum field. Above the water line, you have the Newtonian world. You have predictability, A always goes to B, always goes to C and so on. Below the water line, as soon as human beings get engaged, you're in the quantum field. All you have down there is probability. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. That electron can be over here one day and over there the next day, you never know. This is often called the soft stuff. And no, uh, our, our colleague, Lynn Skodniski says, no, this is the harder stuff. And the people at U2I that write the code, they will tell you that writing code, even though it's challenging, is relatively easy. It's the soft stuff that's really hard. So that's why we call it the harder, the harder stuff. And this is where the action is. So here's how it works. Above the waterline, two and two is always four. You write that code, and it always does what that code <laughs> is supposed to do, all right? But as soon as you go into the human field, two and two can be three, or maybe it can be five, or it can even be 10, you know what I'm talking about. You're, you're, you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden two and two is adds up to 10. What in the world is going on down here? So here's what, I wanna, I wanna ask you this question and I hope you'll answer in the chat box. I'd like you to think about what percentage of your day do you spend involved with problems or conflict? So like, like a percentage. Uh, what percentage of your day do you spend interacting with other people? I was thinking about that. <clears throat> you know, this, uh, I'm sheltering in place. Uh, my older son, Jay, is here with me. Um, but we maybe see each other an hour, interact maybe an hour during the day but I'm doing this almost all day long. I don't know about you, but I'm interacting with people online almost all the time. It feels like my guess is 30, 40% of my day on the average is spent interacting with other people, even if it's online. And then of course, here's the, here's, here, here's the killer. What percentage of your day do you spend interacting with yourself? Now in the chat box, if you could put a percentage down, just put one, for question number one, what percentage of your time do you, are you engaged in problems or, or, or conflict? I would say on a, on a daily basis, maybe five, five, five percent, ten percent. I don't know. We just this is not research. We're just trying to get a feel here. Interacting with other people, I would put two period. I would put thirty. You know, thirty percent, forty percent. Interacting with yourself, I just want to see what you say. So Aggie, as these numbers come up. Um, Tell me a little bit, we'll do a little bit of action research here. Tell me a little bit about what those numbers are saying. Sure. Um, just everybody, please make sure you're, you're um, writing to panelists and attendees in the chat box, um, not just panelists. Um, that way, if you're okay with that, that way everybody can see what's coming up. Um, okay, so. Um, so no names, you don't need names. I'm not quoting names. For the first one, for um, the percentage of the day you spent involved with problems and conflict, we're getting 20%, 30%, 20%, maybe 10%, 30%. Great. 5%, wow, that's unusual. Yeah, that's- 25%, that's... there we go. <laughs> yeah. That would be the usual coding um, a job uh, that I would get would be 75%. And then 10% and uh, 75 and 50 again. And then have that question too, interacting with other people. And then interacting, because I think a lot of people are taking these questions one by one. So as I look at number two, we're getting 50%, uh, 80% interacting other people, 70%, wow. uh, 75, wow. um, high numbers, way above 50%, 80%, yeah. um, 75%, 60%, et cetera. So. Wow. And then interacting with yourself, that third one, Let's see. I'm really, I'm really interested now. Um, 20, 10, 20, um, 30, 30, 10, 10, 20, 10, 20, 20. This is not bad. I was, you know, expecting zeros, some of these. 10%, uh, 25%, 100%, Branca. Wow. Yeah. That's unusual. I'm with you, Branca. <laughs> Um, 65% and 25% and then 70%. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. I want to I, I want to challenge that 20% with yourself. I'm going to I'm going to say 100% and here's why. What does yourself do all day long? Okay? And we're still on the why. Like why bother with this? We'll get into the how a little bit later. But we still need to know why. Well, what does yourself do all day long? I think that's a great question. Well, while life is happening, you you know, you're walking around doing stuff and it looks like you're interacting with the outside world. While that's happening, there's also a lot happening inside of you. At the same time, there's stuff going on out there, there's stuff going on in you about what's going on out there and about the past and, you know, sadness, guilt, worry, whatever, and about the future. And every now and then something happens in the now and all this is going on inside. Well, who is the self that is experiencing what's happening around you, right? You're looking out, seeing stuff going on. And then I wonder if that same self is also capable of experiencing what's happening inside. So these two things are going on simultaneously all day long. There's stuff going on outside, which are the problems and the conversations with other people. And what I'm saying is, if you're thinking, if you're thinking, then you're talking to yourself, right? Well, who's talking and who's listening? So there's interaction going on internally all the time. And that's what we're gonna, that's what, that's what we're gonna be working on here. So when you're thinking, who's listening and who's talking? This is where we're headed. And back to the three worlds again. Here's this person over here, they encode the action. Person over here decodes. And, and, and this, is where the, this is where the action is. Why is self-mastery important? Because you and I are walking around processing reality all the time, constantly processing what's happening to ourselves. We think about what's happening and that thinking is our way of naming, labeling, this is that, this is that, this person is that way, I'm this way. It's, it's, it's chatter, it's constant chatter. And so I was gonna say, unless you practice mindfulness, the number to that third question should be 100%. I mean, I don't know, uh, when I wake up, I start thinking. And that thinking is talking, right? Well, if I'm talking, who's listening? So there's interaction going on all the time inside every human being. Regardless so it's not of a planned you. scheduled conversation that you would have at a given moment. I'm sorry, happens. say that again, Aggie. It's not a planned and a scheduled conversation. It just happens. It just happens. You wake up, you start talking to yourself, welcome to the human race. You're now, you're now in a in an in an interaction with there's there's entities talking to, to each other. Okay. This is such a powerful and useful tool. We used it in the grad program. It's called the awareness wheel. And it's by none, uh, this is really great. It's from Nunnally and Miller. They, they have a really cool uh, book about it. And it, it goes like this. This explains how to, um, how to slow down your internal process. If you're walking around processing reality, what does that processing look like? And this is a way of slowing it down. Uh, by the way, those of you that are LDI grads, you know about the funnel. This, is, this, is, this preceded the funnel. This is where the, where the funnel started. So we're walking around, we're seeing stuff or sensing, you could say, listening, hearing. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at myself in the upper right-hand corner. I've got lights around here and all kinds of stuff. And, and I'm, so I'm seeing all this. So you're walking around during the day, you wake up in the morning and you start experiencing stuff externally. You're seeing stuff out there. What happens next is you're thinking. Thinking is labeling, thinking is naming, thinking is processing. So you have thoughts about that. Like I see myself in this blue shirt and I'm thinking, God, I hope this, I hope that shirt looks okay. And then I have, then the next thing you have is feelings. I'm, I'm sitting here, oh God, I hope this is, I hope people are finding this really useful. Uh, wow, um, okay, oh, let's see, what, what do I want? What are my intentions here? Uh, and then I take action. This is what's happening all day long. Seeing and sensing things, having thoughts about that. The thoughts actually in, uh, generate feelings depending on the interpretation. We have a feeling about what's happening. Almost, and this happens in a nanosecond. And then we want something, we have an intention. There's a need of some kind. 
And then based on that, we take action. This is, this is a kind of a gestalt principle as well. And this just happens like that all fast, all day long. And right in the middle is our core, our operating system that, that kind of oversees this whole process. We're gonna do a whole session on that one time. And this is what happens all the time. Um, I, I, I had an example um, after the last uh, episode of the webinar, I got a, an email from a long time a friend and colleague, probably 25 or 30 years ago. He was a client, great, amazing guy. And he wrote me this very thoughtful email uh, where he said, John, I, I was bored. He said, if it wasn't you, I would have hung up a long time ago. He said, I got to tell you, I was really disappointed. Whew, my gosh. So I read that. And my first thought was, first my thought was, you know, mea culpa, mea culpa, moya vina. You know, I, I was bad. I thought it was pretty good, but I guess maybe it wasn't. And then I got defensive. I felt bad, then I felt defensive and I went back up to the top and I, and I said, well, he doesn't, he doesn't understand development, all this kind of stuff. And then I, then I went, wait a second, wait a second. What do I want here? Well, my first impulse was I wanna teach him something. I want him to realize that if, if you're gonna be in development, if you're gonna be self-mastery, you gotta always be finding learning anywhere and all this kind of stuff. And then I went, wait a minute, John, slow down. So I was able to interrupt this flow around the awareness wheel, back it up, and say, wait a second, what if, what's here for you, John? What's here for you? Think about it in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. And I ended up feeling grateful to him. I actually, I sent him an email thanking him because of some of the self-discovery that happened as I went through this process. Like, how can I make this, this webinar sharper, deeper, more, I don't know, more of an edge to it than the last one? So I'm, I'm very grateful. And if I had been defensive, I wouldn't have gotten here. That's an example of how once you make a commitment to self-development and understand this internal process is going on all the time, you can kind of call a timeout, stop your, stop, your, stop your processor and kind of back it up and come back around with a different intention. We're gonna, we're, I'm sure we're gonna do this on lots of other episodes. So self-mastery means being in development. This phrase I got from my uh, personal development coach, Jan Smith, many years ago. She's been my coach for many, many years. And I love this quote from Jan. She says, you need to be in development, especially about the things that you don't know about or don't think you need to be in development about. Are you willing to be in development? Yes. Are you willing to be in development about those things that you don't think you need to be in development about? That's the key because those are the areas that are invisible. Those are the areas that are messing you up. You think you're doing fine, and you're not doing fine. Are you willing to be in development, especially about those things where you, where you, you, know, you think you're killing it and you're not? Great question, Jan, thank you for that one. So what does it mean to develop? I'm gonna summarize again, you remember this, those of you who weren't on the last, from the old French, Develoupe, I love it. I wish I'd known this 30 years ago. When you, when you uh, take the film to be developed in the old days, it's discovering, revealing, unfolding, the word develope. When you get a gift, you open the package, you, you, you unwrap it uh, at your holiday season. You can't wait to see what's inside the package. It means expanding, evolving, exposing. This is what self-mastery is all about. This is what being in development is really about. It's being continuously discovering, developing, evolving, ripening. I love that, who you are. And that's where the whole thing for the leadership intensive came from. This is not about changing yourself. It's about coming home to yourself. And this changes everything. This process of develope, of discovering, constantly discovering and, and letting an incident like this guy's feedback be a moment of discovery, of, of awakening, of of unfolding, of exposing, it takes a lot of courage, but there you go. So what gets us in trouble? Here's stuff I know, stuff I don't know. This is what gets us in trouble is the stuff we don't know we don't know. That's where development is. Well, and that's what other people are for, okay? They can help us uh, wake up to that stuff. So here's a key point. Self-mastery does not mean that you're finished with, like you don't, 
master something. Uh, all my kids are in the performing arts. My oldest son, Jay, is a rock guitar player. My middle son, David, is a hip hop rap performer with eight CDs out, an amazing guy. My, my younger son, Asa, plays piano and trombone, but he's, he's a math teacher on top of that. My daughter, Emma, is a singer, dancer, actress. So they're all in the performing arts. They know what mastery, they know what developing, they know what practice means. You know, you don't just show up and suddenly you're great. You just, you practice and you practice and you practice. This is like, they're never finished. I can't imagine Asa saying, okay, I've, I've now mastered the piano or I've now mastered mathematics. I, I can't imagine Emma, my daughter saying, yeah, I've mastered dancing. Yeah, I can, I can tick the box on that. I mean, I, we sometimes in our consulting work with corporations, we'll have people who are doing a workshop on, on problem solving or communication and people say, oh yeah, I had that workshop five years ago. You know, it's like, okay, I guess no more, no more learning gonna take place in that process or that processor is shut down. In that particular area, they don't allow processing. So this is what self-mastery means for me is my definition. It's catching yourself not being who you think you could be in a moment. Like catching yourself, wait a minute, wait a second. Is that really who, is that the kind of person I wanna be? Like when this guy gave me that feedback. Really, John, is that, is that how you wanna to respond to that? Is there, any, is there any learning in that? Is there any possibility? It, it seems to me that's gonna shut down a relationship with him. You're not gonna get what might be there for you. Really, buddy, you sure about that? So you first is to catch yourself. So self-awareness is really important key. And then the next thing for me is stepping back. It's what I did, stepping back to notice where you are on the awareness wheel. Um, and then what am I missing here? Or where did I get off the rail? Just starting to ask yourself this question. Um, those of you who have done the program, you know we use this analogy of uh, noticing, like what do you notice when you look out at the world? And we use this example um, of a carpet salesman, like, the, like so there's a carpet in this, in the room where I am. If a carpet salesman came in here, what would they notice without even thinking about it? What could they tell you? Well, the size of the carpet, the size of the room, the thread count, the cost, the value, tons of things about the carpet. If an electrician came in this room, what would they notice? Well, all the lights and the plugs and stuff. What might the electrician miss completely? The carpet, okay? So in, this, in any situation, what are you noticing? That's, you can get there, that's not hard. The next one is what, it, what am I missing here? What's in this room that I'm not seeing? What's in this conversation with my longtime colleague that I'm missing here? What's, what's here for me that I'm missing? It's a fabulous question. In a relationship, if you're in a, if you're in a, in a partnership with somebody, a personal professional partnership and you get into stuff, what am I missing here? What am I not seeing? And then gently, very gently with great forgiveness, return to center, come back, come back to who you are and try an experiment. Like, I wonder, I wonder if, what if we tried this? I wonder if that would work. And here's where I wanna go to wrap this up. Where are the areas where you, now we get into the how, okay. Now we're gonna get specific. If you want to begin to be more conscious and practice being who you are, uh, like if you want to be a good tennis player or dancer or whatever, you practice. Okay, well, there's a chance to practice. I had a chance to practice being John, learning how to be a better John in this exchange with this, with this guy. And these are going to be 11 areas where you can practice. And this, this was stuff I created uh, for the grad program, the graduate program I told you about back in the, back in the 70s, for Pete's sake. And, and they're still using them, I think, uh, in, you know, and it was called the Adaptive Skills Checklist. And I like to think of it now in this application as a kind of a self-mastery guide. Okay, these are 11 things that you can focus on, all right? And oh, by the way, if you want a PDF of these things, uh, you can send, I'll, I'll show you later, but be thinking if you want a PDF of these, happy to let you have them. So I'm gonna put my glasses on, if that's okay with you. I'm gonna put them on even if it's not, ah, okay. So. Here, here, 11 area. The first one is engagement. Like when you wake up in the morning, how engaged are you? Engagement goes in and out, depending on a lot of things, depending on 
on your processing. What's happening inside, your thoughts, your feelings, your intention, that awareness wheel is operating. And one of the things that, that shows up is how engaged you are. Uh, and, and like some people show up and they're just not engaged. Some people show up and they are engaged. You know how it is in a meeting or a phone call or in a relationship, how engaged are you? And what affects your engagement, that's the key. What makes you wanna be closer? How safe do people feel with you? How safe do people feel? We can get to that in just a minute in more detail, but that's a great one. Number two, what's your relationship with authority? Well, or think of it as rank, you know, rank. People have rank based on age, education, gender, uh, size, uh, position in a department in a company, uh, you know, uh, country, language skills. We'll, we find hundreds of ways of, of, of ranking each other. Well, are you, are you able to be with people who have more rank than you are in a way that's uh, parallel, where you're two human beings, two adults, trying to get something done? Can you move toward interdependence with, with, with people, regardless of what their rank is? Number three, availability of affect. This is how available are your emotions to you? Are you aware when they happen? Um, some people have huge swings of emotions. Other people have very, very small, it's like are, are calibrated, very, very small. We'll do, a, we'll, we'll do a webinar about emotions one of these days. But how available, how aware are you of what you're feeling? If you're not aware of what you're feeling, it's gonna leak out, I promise you. People will pick it up, they'll pick it up. So. A lot of self-awareness is about, okay, what's that? like that awareness wheel. I caught myself feeling defensive when this guy said that to me. And then eventually I got back around where I felt grateful. I mean, it, was a, it wasn't BS. It was a genuine gratitude toward this guy. Okay. Okay. Number four, receiving feedback. What's it like for people to give you feedback? This is the one. How costly is it for people to tell you the truth about you? That's a tough one. If you're a manager, a leader, team leader, parent, or in a relationship, you know, how safe is it for people to talk to you about their experience of you? Boy, that's a big one. That's a really, really big one. That may be as, as, as clear a determiner about your relationship to your development. That's a tough one. If you can, if you can really work on that one, you're, you're, you're on the way, you know, you're gonna be fine. And then giving feedback. Um, when you give feedback, is it uh, judgmental? It, can you give feedback with, with fairness, accuracy, and compassion? Uh, my, you know, my pop, uh, who was a, uh, a really a fall down alcoholic, and, but a fabulous man, a beautiful, smart, right? He was a newspaper man. And back in the 1950s, that meant alcoholic for, in many cases. And uh, and so, but he had so much wisdom. And one of the, one of his sayings to me was when, you know, he said, son, we're all just trying to get to the post office. Boy, that has helped me so many times when, when I'm, when I'm, I'm wanting to give somebody some feedback and I realized they woke up in the morning, just like I did, just trying to be, just trying to do their best. And this is something that they may not even be aware of. They're, I say, John, they're just trying to get to the post office, just like you. Can you find yourself, your, your, can you find humanity in that person that you're giving feedback to and speak to them from that place? That's really, really uh, a beautiful thing when it happens. And then number six, what's your capacity for self-correction? When you get feedback, do you do it? <laughs> do you do anything with it? Uh, after our, uh, our leadership intensives, uh, sometimes people uh, you know, they go back home, go to work, and people say, well, how was that program for you? And we suggest that they tell people, well, uh, I'm just going to do what I do. And, and, and in a few days, I want to ask you, what are you noticing, if anything, about me? So that's the key. Um, it's like, can you, can, does it actually show up in, in your internal, the way you process, but does it also show up in your external behavior, in what you say, what you do, and what you intend? toward the rest of the world. 
And this cluster here about self-concept is really important. How accurate is your self-concept? Do you tend to see yourself as better than you are? Um, you know, bragging, arrogant, and so on, uh, self-absorbed. Or on the other hand, do you tend to see yourself as less than you are? Both of those are not, not a good thing. Uh, in fact, the word humble, come, humus comes from the word soil, the same root. And in the, in the, in the biblical root, the Aramaic and the uh, root of that word, uh, it means um, there's meek and humble. Meek means transparent. And humble means accurate in your self con Do you know who you are? Are you just willing to be who you are, like dirt? Can you just be who you are? Doesn't mean you are dirt, but dirt is just dirt. It, it doesn't try to be anything else. Second, this number eight here is what happens when your self-esteem goes up and down, fluctuations? What do you do? It's like when that guy gave me that feedback, boom, I thought, oh man, maybe I should just stop. I had the thought, maybe I should not do any more webinars. I mentioned that to... Magda, my assistant, and she, oh, no, John, no, 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 please, please keep processing, okay? Um, and, and so what do you do? What do you, first of all, what triggers you? See, the, here's the thing. When someone criticizes us, if it goes in, if it hurts, it means that there was some place in us that was already thinking about that, or that it was a concern of some kind. Like if somebody said, John, you're no good at talking to people, uh, I would go, Really? I mean, it would, it would kind of, I, I would go, well, wow, well, okay. But it wouldn't hurt me, see? But if somebody says something else, it, it hurts me. I go, oh, wow, there was something in me that was ready to hear that or was asking the same question. But what do you do when, you're, when your self-esteem drops? Can you pull yourself back and how do you do that? Number nine, are you aware of your impact on other people? This is huge. Most of the conflicts and the, and the work that I've been involved in over the years, this has been a major factor. Somebody in that system, whether it was a relationship or a team or a company, did not realize the impact they were having on others. Do you know the impact that you have on other people? You may have a lot more than you think. Very important. Number 10, congruence, authenticity. Uh, this is the word meek. Uh, meek means transparent. It means what's happening on the inside shows on the outside. Uh, like when Jesus uh, trashed the temple, he was meek. He was really ticked off and you could see. So meek is not, you know, this, this little mousy character. Meek is when you're, whatever's going on in here shows, transparent. How authentic, how real are, do you ring true? Like, do people know what's going on with you? Are you hard to read? Are you easy to read or hard to read? And then finally, shadow awareness. This is, uh, this is one that's kind of a technical term. Maybe we can do some uh, work uh, in, a, in a future uh, webinar about the shadows, very important principle. If you would like a copy of these um, um, adaptive skills, send an email to Magda, my executive assistant at sheriffcenter.com and just put adaptive skills in the subject line. Um, let's talk, um, Aggie. Um, um, I can I can stop the share now, uh, as it were, and um, and we can just have a conversation. Would that that be the next step here? Yep. Wow. Thank you, John. Thanks so much for this. Um, everybody, over to you. Um, you can either use the chat or the Q and A um, for questions. Um, Giovanni is asking if we could post the email again. Giovanni, I think we will send the PDF to all the participants who are here with us tonight. I think the email address was mainly posted for people who will later watch the recording so that they can contact us later on. But we have the email addresses of everybody who's here right now. So you will be receiving the, uh, uh, the, the PDF, whether you want it or not. <laughs> and a link to the recording also, right? A link to the recording. And the link to the recording. And, and Magda has just posted the address anyway. So uh, questions, anybody, um, any questions or comments or thoughts that we can yeah. all get into a a conversation about are, are more than welcome. And uh, while you're typing your questions or thinking about those, um, I have one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what people thought, what they felt, mm -hmm. you know, anything they can come up with that happened in the, in, in, in the awareness. What's your question or thought? Yeah. yeah, oh, that would be fantastic to actually apply the awareness, uh, you know, um, cycle right now, this moment, like, what are you thinking? 
what are you sensing what are you feeling what's what's happening for you right now as you as you um as you listen to the webinar um but my my question was actually around the the self mastery being because i heard you say that self mastery is a never ending road yeah. like it, i mean you never you never make it to the finish line right sorry, sorry about that <laughs> um let, so, let, let me just say this one time this this engineer from Boeing, they put all of their high potential people through the uh, intensive uh, back when it was in Seattle. And this one a Boeing engineer at the end of the program came to me and he said, I get it, John. He said, do the LDI, turn your life into a project. <laughs> I said, yeah. Right. Okay. right. And once you enter that road, you're just yeah, on it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, and at the same time, the checklist you showed us had a scale of one through six. Yeah. Implying that we are, you know, looking at ourselves and, and, and reflecting on our, yeah. our different abilities. We are able to say more or less whether we're at the, at the start of this road or towards, you know, a, a level off. Some yeah. In this road. Like what if I get sixes down, everything, am I done? Can I, can I, can yeah. I move on kind of thing? But, yeah. I think my question is more around how do we focus? So let's say, you know, I'm seeing, and this could happen. I mean, where I live in Poland, most people would probably just say threes or fours down the yeah, line, you know? Right down the middle. That's the exactly. place to be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. where do I, you know, how do I focus my, my development um, uh, initiatives or my, you know, where, where does my work go into? How do I focus on this? Or do I focus on well, that time? Or how do I know what, what is the time for right well, now? Well, you know, you're hanging out with a bunch of people in the facilitator group who will call you on stuff and who will and 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 who will speak the truth to you so you're we're very fortunate i think uh to have this network of people that are in this that are in this work um and so you know if i look at one of the facilitators and they go three 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 or four you know three four i just call them on it i go come on i mean this you know this sounds like you've created this narrow path you can't be too great and you can't be too big a failure so what's what's the truth here yeah, but that's us. What about the rest of the world? I mean, well, we don't well, often get that type of feedback. This is where this is where you take yeah. This is where you take that um, that PDF when you get it. Sit down with your, your your kids. I mean, we did it with our kids. You know, uh, do it do it with your partners, people at work, people at home. Just say, hey, listen, I'm, I I saw this crazy webinar, this thing, and the the idea of self development. I mean, just put the truth on the table. Why not? I'm really curious. How do you see me on these things? You know, what's the truth? And they have a conversation. And I suspect that after the first or second or third one, as you go down, um, it's going to be a fabulous conversation. You're going to discover something really important in that mm -hmm. conversation. I would just just start just start asking people. Mm. And then the conversation itself, I'm hearing you say, can oh. just can, can, that can be. Who cares about the number, right? Four, okay. Okay, what stands between me and six? What would you say? What are those moments, you know? And you just start, you start, the numbers just are only useful in triggering a, uh, you know, a real conversation. You're trying to make the relationship more real. Not, not, you're not trying to be nice. We're not called on to be nice. We're called on to be real. Yeah. Mm. That's a, what, what a great concept for a conversation. Yeah, I'd like to have a real conversation with you about yeah. about me in these areas. That's a crazy thing. This guy did this thing, and I'd just like to are any of these you know meaningful? Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, Ursula says sometimes I find it difficult not to think about me and my acting. <laughs> Uh, where is the off button? Where is the off button? Um, I think uh, too much self-optimizing leads me uh, too much only um, to my persona. You know, I, Ursula, let me respond this way. I, I, of course, I was, as you know, I was a Lutheran pastor, priest for a number of years and have been involved in Eastern and Western, you know, spiritual paths and have spent a lot of time thinking and exploring the journey in and the journey out. And I think if you were go, if you, if you allow yourself to go totally, totally deep, deep, deep within, you will absolutely naturally come back out in service to the world. I've just seen that happen over and over again. Now the ego gets involved in fear, you get stuck, but I'm, if you really go deep inside, you won't stay there. You can't stay there. The world will call you in some way. On the other hand, the same thing is true. If you go out in service to the world, and you genuinely, I've seen people do this. 
Give, 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 give yourself to the world, not from an ego place, because then you're going to get really upset. But if you absolutely can, can come from a place of love, you're going to find yourself out there in that world. So I really think either way you go, if you go with the flow, you're going to find a balance. You're going to find both. You're going to find service in the world and you're going to find internal growth. And, and I think when you talk about the going back to yourself, you're talking about the core self. And actually, yeah. we have another question about that from Branka, actually, about, about the core self. And what do you perceive the core self to be? Great question, Branka. Wow. We, how much time do we have? 15 minutes. Okay. What's Not even that. <laughs> it's like that exam. I saw this thing. Uh, describe the universe. Be specific. You know. <laughs> okay, John, you have about 60 seconds to talk about the core self. <laughs> exactly. Um, there is, I think, there's no way to talk about it. I was involved in consciousness research years ago. I did some doctoral work in, in this area. And because when I started getting ready for this webinar, I almost went down the path of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I realized it's very abstract. It's, I mean, and th there's no answers to it. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back around. And I, I said, now I'm gonna do something that's more practical for people. I, I think you come here to find something you can use. Mm -hmm. When you start really diving into who is, what's really underneath all this, okay? All the major, all the world's religions, are wanting to touch that place and are attempting to, I think all the great spiritual teachers, all the great philosophers, you know, are all uh, speaking from that place to that place. They were, they were, they're, they're channeling something from that place. You know, they're coming from that place and speaking to that place. This is the kind of thing like, uh, like a subatomic particles. I, you can't see the particle. But you can see where it's been. You can, you, can, you, you can see the trail that it leaves, right? Now, this whole thing about you will know people by the fruit. You'll know people by the, you know, we had a thing in the ship, uh, in, in, in the Navy, we would, we would follow trawlers from the other country that we were engaged with during the Cold War. And we would look at the garbage and the trash and the papers and the stuff that they threw off. Uh, we would come, come behind them and pick it up and we would try to draw some inferences, what were they eating, what were they smoking, what were they thinking and all that. So you can see the trail of the self in what, you know, what kind of a, what kind of a, uh, what kind of a wake do you leave behind you can reveal something about the self. So I don't know that it's possible to actually touch that place. Mm -hmm. But for instance, you go down inside, down, 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 and you get to this, okay, who's speaking, who's listening, Okay, well, who is listening to that person listening? Okay, like this is something that humans have that we, I don't think other animals do, maybe they do. We can be conscious that we're conscious. We can think about being, we can think about our thinking. This is second level thinking. Like right now I can, I could stop and I could step back and I can watch myself in a sense. Okay, I'm having this conversation with Branka, gosh. Uh, I wonder if I wonder if she's getting anything. I wonder if, am I am I being true to the topic and so on. so I I can actually think about what I'm thinking about and that's something. So down underneath it all, there is this dot, this tiny dot. I think really quantum physics is the only way to think about it. I wish I could be more specific. Uh, if you could call it the God place, you could call it the you know the center of the universe. You call it, use use whatever language you can. We don't know how to talk about it. All I know is that when I was preparing for this place, for, for this thing. And I've, I've, I've told my facilitators this, I don't talk about my, my spiritual path. I talk from it. <laughs> and it's kind of a cop out because I wouldn't know how to talk about it. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I, I couldn't describe it to you, but I'm in it right now in my speaking to you. I feel like I'm coming from this place and it sounds weird, but I think love is about, is, is about the best yeah. word we have for it. Yeah. Love speaking to love. Yeah. And how do you know you're in it? Like, how do you know you're, you're actually at the core? Like, when do you, obviously that would be individual for everybody, but for you yourself, John, how do you know you're there? Well, I feel a kind of a, like I'm, I was feeling it just a minute ago, a kind of a hum. Um, yeah. It sounds, it sounds weird, but um, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It's like when I was singing in, in, in a group, and all the harmonies were just, you know, all just right there. Or if you've ever been in a anything where there's this 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 
coming together of all the energies and so on. This is vibration mm -hmm. that happens uh, on a high performing team of any kind. There's this hum that happens. That's and sometimes I, I, referred to as a flow. It definitely is a flow. And I wish I could pronounce that guy's name, but he's Hungarian and yeah. I can't pronounce it. It's, it was bigger than the book. Yeah. But the thing that, that makes this hard, the webinar is I can't see your faces. I mean, when I'm in a room and I'm speaking to a room, I can actually sense when what I'm saying is going in. Mm -hmm. And quite often I'm not, uh, I know uh, when I used to preach on, on in, in, the, mm -hmm. in the church, uh, we had a morning, we had an 8.30 service and an 11 o'clock service and, and so on. And, and the senior pastor, they just invited me to, you know, to, to preach from time to time. He would say, John, how do you do that? I look, you've got just bullet points on a piece of paper. And he said, you know, it's the same sermon, but it's not the same. How do you remember what to say? And I said, Dick, I'm not remembering what to say. I'm listening for what to say. Mm. And he said, God, John, I don't understand. That's amazing. And I, I mean, I'm doing that right now. I have no idea what I'm, gonna, what I'm about to say. So I kind of open the door and, and, and say, what needs to be said to Bronca right now? It sounds really good. Kind of spooky but that's that can it. sound very scary for many people because once you open the door you know you kind of let go and you let go trust, of controlling trust and trusting what comes yeah you do have to trust yourself and that that doesn't come easy most people want to have a plan i mean i, I you know i'd love to i mean i, I have but i mean i have slides you mm -hmm. know i have slides to structure what i'm going to say i i'm i may do a webinar without any slides sometimes to see what happens mm. So I think trusting yourself. One. Boy, there's some great things here. Well, we had a, a great question for Tomac that I'm going to summarize for you. And his question great. is about authenticity. So when you look at the adaptive um, checklist and yeah. you see yourself on, a, a, say, the lower scale in some areas, because that's true and authentic for you, yeah. then having to or feeling that you, oh, those are the areas I should work on may feel um, not authentic at times because it's like, that's not me. I'm, I'm here. I'm not there. So where is the line between? That. Well, I would know. say this is where you need other people. Hmm. Uh, this, this, uh, I would say this, uh, Tomek, you need, you need one or two people that you trust who know you well, where you basically put all, you, you put all your cards on the table, you know, speak the truth and, and just say, I'm, I'm a little confused about this or that. Just tell the total truth, make it two people that, that you can trust to do that. And then, and have a conversation, take this, Adaptive skills uh, checklist, look at the authenticity scale. I mean, even questions like, um, do I ring true? Am I easy to read? Am I hard to read? Can you tell what's going on with me? Do you feel safe with me? I mean, you've got to have people that will tell you the truth. See, that's the issues. But that's, that, that's a great conversation to be in because auto gentes, authentic, it comes from self, auto, automobile. Gentes means the source of. So it means that what you're, what you're, the source of what's of what you're being and doing is in you. So to be authentic means that what's coming out of you was in you. It's not being done to. Oh, here's 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 a great uh, metaphor I think for you, Tomek. Uh, one of my uh, friends in America is, is is a guy named Dave Wondra, and he's a trumpet player, a really great trumpet player. And his trumpet teacher is Bobby Shue, probably one of the greatest jazz uh, trumpet players uh, in America. And um, as Dave was telling me this story, uh, he said he was in a practice session with his, with, with his teacher and he was playing a piece and, um, and Bobby Shue said, hang on Dave, stop, stop, stop. And, and Dave said, what, what? D uh, did I make a mistake? And Bobby said, no, no, you played it perfectly. And David said, well, then why, why did you stop me? And he said, Dave, you gotta make a choice. Are you playing right now to impress me are you playing to move me? Whew. Oh, I can feel that right now, just telling it to you. So are you, are you, whatever you're doing, like right now, am I saying this to you, Tomek, to impress you? Or am I saying this to you in the hope that it will touch you or move you? And it's almost always a blend, you know, like, yeah, I, I hope you think, God, that John Sher was a fabulous guy. But if I can be honest with myself about that piece of it, then maybe the rest of it can be authentic. See, this is where I wish you were in the room and we could, I could look <laughs> at your face and you could go, I don't get it. Or wow, that was, thank you or whatever. So 
<laughs> well, here's Thomas' reply. <clears throat> Life is not the way it's supposed to be. It's a quote. Yeah. Um, it's the way it is. The yeah. way we cope with it is what makes the difference. Yeah. If you do what's easy, your life will be hard. However, if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. Uh, that's lovely. I would change the word cope, which has a kind of a reactive, uh, at least in, in, um, in English, uh, if you're coping with something, it means, it means that it's, it's kind of beating you down and you, you basically survive it. Um, I would, I'd want to change that word to something else. For me, I, I think I don't want to cope with life. I want to engage, engage with it, something like that. Anyway, play with that word, play with that verb. Verbs are very important. Play with that verb and see what see what verb you'd use. We got time for one more, Aggie. Um, I actually think we're 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 wrapping up and we're coming close to the end because um, I did okay. want to um, just have a few comments, um, a finishing comment uh, before we go. Uh, one is a request to all of you to before you go use the chat box and share with us your feedback on this session. We read absolutely what every everything you write down. We read. Yep, and we do um, like want to see both uh, what you liked about it, what you found useful, but also what is it that you can help us improve going forward for the next episodes. Um, We're on a learning curve here. Uh, Aggie, Aggie's never been a webinar host and I've never been a webinar whatever. Um, and so we need your feedback. And Aggie, before you wrap up, I wanna say one more thing about Barry Johnson and the session on the, on, on the 18th. With all of, this, of, the, of, of the countries of the world drifting to the right, and the polarization that's occurring, like what's happening on the streets now, Aggie, you know, yeah. where the government and the church and other, I mean, all of the major institutions are dealing with major problems and the solutions they're coming up with are to take sides in a polarity. And Barry's new book is called, And. How do we have this and that? How do we have justice and mercy? How do we have structure and freedom? And mm -hmm. I just hope, I, I want to get as many people as I can to, to be mm -hmm. on this session with Barry coming out. I think, I think it's like a very relevant conversation to have these days. So I hope all of you can be with us and also let others know about this, please. Uh, and, and I think we have one more announcement, um, a housekeeping announcement is that the, the, we are actually, you know, it's, it's COVID times and we're locked in, uh, but we are organizing a leadership development intensive online. And we have a few spots available um, and it's, it's soon, it's uh, November 13th and 14th, mm -hmm. and then another two days, 20 and 21st, yeah. I believe. Um, so it's coming up very, very soon next month. Uh, we have a few spots available. If you're interested uh, and available, please contact us for details. Um, Magda, you can type in that email address again in the chat box, um, or you can just go to our website, um, which is um, share, um, sorry. Yes, thank you. <laughs> shareleadershipcenter.com far more in, in, find more information there on the on their events um, or just contact Magda under her email address and uh, we'll provide more information um, it, and it works online we've done it so adapting to the, the new realities of this world um, thank you all very much we're receiving some thanks from everyone um, thank you John for inspiring and a moving session um, and um, thank you all for being with us. Um, hang in there, stay safe and healthy. And we'll see you all in three weeks in a conversation with Bayer Johnson. See you, tell your friends. Thank you. <laughs>